Okay, so uh, black magic pocket cinema camera 4k uh, What I'm doing is we're looking uh, to establish uh, A fight scene we've got a one of our short films is going to be taking place in an area like this which has such contrasting light sources uh, What I'm doing is setting this up ahead of time or doing testing on the actual What this is capable of for what I need? So I need a wide angle lens for some of the stuff that we're doing. In order to make that happen, the wide angle lens that I have to work with is a 3.4 uh, or a 3.8. We're running this at 3200 ISO, um, or ISO. It really doesn't matter if you understand what I'm saying. There's no need to fight about the language. Um, <laughs> and we're looking at shooting this in RAW, of course. But what I'm gonna do is record some of the vehicle i'm going to record some of this stuff and again this is unbalanced my final shooting will be on a stabilizer the moza air 2 which i do have uh, but this is again this is run and gun just shooting to see what i can fit in and how i can adjust for this now right off the bat you can see that it, it's really pulling out the um it's it's just from the screen it looks like a beautiful image that it really captures this well and of course white balance beforehand and everything else makes it so much easier from pulse later on uh, differences in when i switch it out to uh, different iso values um, or when i change the aperture of course that will also give me different um, things to play with as you see i drop it here you can look at the histogram so bumping it up gives me an awful lot more uh, of information in there if i drop it down you can see that yes it leans toward a darker image but that's something i can do in post rather and what happens here is if i put it all there i get more of the information down in the shadows and i try pulling that up later there's going to be more noise to it so uh, much like the sound of children in the background so <laughs> in this particular case i'm looking at what's peaking which is basically out there versus what I have as the main body of my exposure. Uh, it really does look great. So, and I'm <laughs> shooting at Om here who is <laughs> hiding behind the iPhone so that we understand the dynamics involved in this. And you can see my color information in the background. So even looking into the depths, if I change my aperture just a bit there, you can see I can still see that changing this on the camera. If I leave it to where I have more full body exposure in there, as I'm doing right now, you can see that some of the information is lost, especially if I go um, too wide, it's 3.6 right now. Some of the information is lost uh, later in post, but how much? Uh, that is to be determined uh, when I get back to the computer and, and we check it out. Um, but again, what I'm looking for is not shooting uh, necessarily uh, for the what's behind the trees or behind or through the, the what we can see uh, between these pillars and things like that. My focus will be on the two actors uh, who are in there fighting uh, and performing so that alone is all I'm really going to be exposing for so that that has to take be taken into account so when I'm exposing for her I'm going to expose with false color I'm going to take a look to see what her skin tones are like and to make sure they're where I need but also adjust it according to the histogram to see where um, it falls in the amount of information I'm going to be used using later on so that's really important um, because if I get to, like if I shove everything to the side like this, exposing to the left, of course, I lose an awful lot of information. But this isn't bad as far as if I'm going for that look. If I'm going for this kind of a prison cell looking out into the world type look. That can be duplicated in post, however, by exposing everything up here and then changing it later. So as with any of the shooting that we want to do we want to have the best in so that you can adjust it to make it look terrible later if you want if you have terrible and that's all you've got 
<laughs> then you're going to get terrible on the way out. So just a couple of things for uh, that information. We got the 1.7 uh, 50 millimeter. It's, a, it's, it's 25, but it's the equivalent to 50. So Panasonic 25 millimeter 1.7 uh, aperture. Uh, I can actually run this at 400 ISO uh, versus the 3200 that I had earlier. Um, so <laughs> that's just how much of a light difference that we can put into play here. And throw this up. And just how much better uh, looking we can get on this. Uh, it, it's really dramatic. So. I can, obviously, I can uh, still uh, switch things over to where I'm bumping that up and I can change for higher frame rates uh, because that requires more light so I can run it at, you know, 60 frames per second, things like that, which a lot of it we're going to be doing. Uh, this doesn't have image stabilization on this lens at all, so that's why the Mose Air 2. But as you can see, it's, it's really, uh, it captures a lot of this stuff. Uh, with dramatic um, ability. So the lens matters. <laughs> when you have a fast lens, 1.4 and up, uh, or even less, you have so much more uh, a variety of options as far as your filming, for your frame rate, for your motion blur, things like that.